So we're going to look at strong and weak bases and how they dissociate in a solution. So strong and weak bases act literally the exact same way as strong and weak acids, okay? So just to, you know, break it down, I guess, um, you had LiOH versus NH4OH, okay? Bases typically, okay, will have this OH, your hydroxide, as your anion. Not always, okay? There are definitely some bases uh, that don't have OH at the end, ammonia, okay? But in general, just a good kind of way of thinking about it for 95% of the time is usually your bases will have an OH as your anion, okay? And when I put these things with hydroxides into water, they're going to dissociate, okay? They're going to break apart. So the cation and anion are going to split apart into their, their ions, okay? So I'm going to get lithium plus, hydroxide minus NH4 plus, so ammonium with the plus one charge, hydroxide with the minus one charge, okay? And the difference is that your strong bases are going to dissociate 100%, 99.999% of the time, okay? They, so they will fully dissociate. That's another way to say that, right? It'll fully dissociate. So you're getting all ions in your solution, Li plus and OH minus versus your weak bases like ammonium hydroxide are going to not fully dissociate. Okay, they actually favor staying as a molecule. But you do have some dissociation. Ooh, okay. Lots of words, all right? So that's, that's the big picture, right? Your strong base is gonna break up 100% of the time. Weak base is gonna stay together as a molecule and then sometimes it breaks up, okay? So it's going to look literally the exact same as your strong and weak acids, okay? So you have two beakers here with water. <laughs> Again, I'm sorry for my drawings, all right? If you had a strong base versus a weak base. So again, LiOH, lithium hydroxide, versus ammonium hydroxide, okay? If I put these two things boop, into my solution, 100% of the lithium hydroxide I would put into this solution would split up as ions. Okay, I don't have any lithium hydroxide as a molecule, as a compound together, okay? Versus your ammonium hydroxide, if I drop that into my water, I would have most of it staying together. You get it, and then some of it's gonna split up. So I'm gonna have a little bit of ammonium and a little bit of hydroxide. So I do get some ions, some dissociation, but mostly they're staying together. Okay, uh, this is why as an electrolyte, okay, on your electrolytes table, your strong bases are listed as strong electrolytes, okay? There's a lot of ions in a strong base solution, so that means there's a lot of ability for electricity to flow through that solution. A lot of ions, that electricity can flow through. In your weak base, yes, there are some ions, not a lot, okay? so. It's going to be a weak electrolyte. Easy, okay? Um, and how to remember strong versus weak bases, okay? There are eight strong bases. All right. Uh, these are your alkali. And then you have some alkaline, but not beryllium or magnesium. So basically not the first two alkaline, okay? So everything else is strong though. So lithium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, 
potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, cesium hydroxide. So literally, you just go down your first column of your periodic table, all of those matched with hydroxide will be strong bases, okay? Then you go down the second column of your periodic table. Ignore the first two, ignore beryllium, ignore magnesium. And then below that is gonna be calcium, hydroxide, strontium, hydroxide, and barium hydroxide, okay? These are my eight, one, three, four, five, yes. Okay, we can count, okay? Your eight strong bases, all right? Your weak base. is going to be ammonium hydroxide, okay? And then you're going to have a lot of insoluble things, okay? You're going to have a lot of insoluble hydroxides. So it does have a lot of non-electrolytes for your bases, which is very different than your acids, okay? Acids are going to be always electrolytes, either strong or weak. Bases, not so much, okay? Bases, you will have some that are totally insoluble. Okay, so if you go to your solubility rules and you look at the very last rule on hydroxides, bases with hydroxide are usually insoluble. Okay, so except with these things. So for non-electrolytes, right? So if you don't have one of these eight strong bases and you don't have ammonium hydroxide, then you are going to have to follow your solubility rules. Okay, so you're going to have to look at bases with hydroxide with an OH minus. So if I had, to not confuse us, like uh, iron 2 hydroxide, okay, which would be a base, it has an OH, but if I'm looking at my solubility rules, bases with hydroxide are insoluble, except with these things. Well, iron is not an exception, so this would be a solid, which means it's not dissociating at all. So if I had this page, right? And, and I was looking at iron 2 hydroxide. I don't get any ions in the solution. It's not soluble. It would just, you know, doo -doo -doo, sink down to the bottom of my, <laughs> of my beaker and I'd get some iron 2 hydroxide metal solid on the, uh, on the bottom of the beaker. It wouldn't dissociate at all. Okay, so um, that would be a non-electrolyte solution, even though Technically, FeOH2 would be a base. Okay, so be uh, be wary of that. That's very different than your acids. Okay, there are no non-electrolyte acids. There are some non-electrolyte bases. There you go. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Uh, oh, this guy would be solid, and then every everything else, all of these would be Aq they do dissociate, right? AQ. Even for your weak base, you're going to put aqueous because it does dissociate. Good luck!